Platformers are quite possibly one of the largest and most influential game genres to ever exist. Large enough for its framework to form dozens of subgenres, each with their own unique names and styles of gameplay. Platformers are also really fun to make, but so many already exist that it needs to be unique in some way for it to be worth playing. So for my excuse to make a platformer game, I'm going to make bending the fabric of space itself its core mechanic. There's a couple things I should probably mention before we begin. I'm going to be making this game using Python with the Pygame library, and many of you are probably thinking, but Mango, Python is like the worst possible language to use for game development. And in my defense, Python is the only language I know. For those of you who don't understand why Python is an issue for this, C-based languages are, and this isn't even an exaggeration, 400 times faster than Python. Luckily, I did two minutes of Google research and found some Python modules that can help performance, so I'll just plug those in when necessary. I'm probably going to wait until the end of development to worry about that, so until then, I'll just speed up clips of the game affected by lag, so you'll barely notice it in the video. Hopefully. Also, if you're planning on learning some things about coding or game development in this video, I wouldn't entirely suggest it. If we were to make a scale of the lowest and highest levels of Python skill, I'd probably be right about here. Thus, some things in my game will probably be written poorly and shouldn't be taken as an example. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at how I made a game about bending the fabric of space and why it ended up being a worse idea than I thought. After setting some things up, I started my game with what all games usually start with. Squares. Nice. Then we arranged said squares to make a level. Kinda. I mean, I guess we have a wall, and, uh, and the ground. <laughs> then we did some programming for a player, and here it is- oh, there it goes. The first guy to discover gravity must have been like, and after a little bit of bug fixing, it should work perfectly- How does this even happen? Looking back, I genuinely had no idea what could have caused this. Considering the simplicity of what I had so far, I couldn't imagine any bug that would have made it sink to the lowest block, until I decided to draw the blocks by hitbox instead of position, and found this. Oh. Yeah, that makes more sense now. I'm not even sure how this is possible, but I managed to misplace the X and Y values of the positions for the function that draws the boxes. How did I mess this up? I don't know, but at least it works now. Then I gave our character the ability to move around and jump. I didn't intend to make it ascent to the heavens upon pressing the W key, but that's okay. It was an easy fix and now it works fine. Never mind. You're probably starting to notice a pattern here with every new feature bringing another new bug. Now, you might think this is usually how game development works, but no, it's just because I'm not very good at this. <laughs> but don't worry, after a few more tries, I finally got it to work decently. Now, this isn't the best platformer script, but for now, it's good enough. Let's move on. Now that we have a basic framework in place, let's try to polish it and add more to it. Our first change, which was obviously the most important change, is that we turned our player into a rectangle. And, you know, also improved collisions against the walls, but, you know, rectangle is more important, of course. Then we made the camera scroll to follow the player so we can make the levels longer, because you know what they say, longer levels, uh, longer happiness. Then we added some textures to- uh-oh. Then we redid some textures and then added them to our game, and they look pretty good. No, they're not Minecraft. I know what you're thinking. This isn't Minecraft. Then I decided that I didn't like my collision code anymore, so I just, you know... I literally rewrote my entire platformer engine, a process that took much longer than I expected until I came up with something that I liked. And it doesn't look too bad. It's about time a rectangle evolves into an actual character. So I opened up Adobe Animate and designed a character for the game, and then split its limbs into symbols and animated it. At first I was going to name it something edgy because it looks kind of edgy, but to be honest it looks kind of like a Brad. So I took Brad and plugged him straight into my game, and despite his contrasting color palette with the saturated environment, he fit in pretty well, even though he got a little bit pixelized along the way. And now that our player's been upgraded, we kind of need to upgrade everything else. Now you see, if I was using a bigger engine like Unity, I would have just drowned it in post-processing effects to cover it up, but I can't really do that with Pygame and I have to come up with an actual solution for this. And then out of nowhere it hit me. 
What if I stack multiple layers of the level on top of itself? You're probably wondering what this would even do, so let me show you. So we take a level, right? Then we make multiple copies of it, each one decreasing in size slightly. Then we stack them all on top of each other with the center of the screen as their center point. And look, now we have a 3D effect. My first attempt at implementing this added a lot of lag to the game, to the point where it was basically unplayable, but after a bunch of optimizations it runs smoothly now. <laughs> now it really does look like Minecraft. Then we added some spikes to our game. Oh, you wanna know what the spikes do? Oh wait, no, Brad, wait, no! Don't touch the spikes, no! You know, a death without a cool death effect is like a game developer without a crippling sense of worthlessness. So I added a bunch of camera shake and a really simple particle system, and now it's really cool to die. Oh, that sounded really bad out of context. Now we've got spikes in the walls and the ceiling too, for even more opportunities to die. Oh, sorry, what's that? Still not enough ways to die? Alright, here's some lava. Because every video game in existence needs lava. Pain is hilarious. Now we've got some panels in the back for a parallax-like background. And yep, you guessed it, they're made of squares. Alright, and now that we have a generic platformer set up, it's time to make it ungeneric by making it so that you can bend the fabric of space. Alright, so what I had in mind for this is that we take a level, right, and then we select one vertical column of the level and manipulate it systematically in some way. And in this case, we're gonna stretch it out. I'm probably gonna add more ways to manipulate it later, but for now we're just gonna try to get this to work. My first attempt at implementing this went surprisingly well. I also added a selector that determines which column you warp when you click. And there it is. And look, even the background is warped. I did have to add some limitations to how many times you could warp and how far you could do it, because if you were to have infinite capabilities with it, the whole level could just become an elongated corridor and it wouldn't really be fun. I really wanted to start adding other ways to warp space, but first I need to make a currency system for the warping abilities so that it would be reasonably limited. So I whipped up some textures and threw them into my game, and uh, yeah, as you can see, you pick up batteries and that fuels this meter over here, and whenever you decide to stretch space, it takes away an energy. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to make the thing that powers the ability to bend space a battery. I'm sorry, I was so tired when I was making this. I'm just imagining it now. Oh no, I ran out of energy for my supernatural space bending abilities. Better grab a Duracell. I guess you could say while well, making this feature, my brain was low on battery. <laughs> One unnecessarily stress-inducing school night later, we've added a ton of stuff, such as this cool new bar on the bottom of the screen that tells you how much energy you have and what kind of warps you can do. Although, I have yet to add the warps. Then we also made it so they can respawn after you die, because of course, true gamers don't die, they respawn. And then we made it so they can actually beat a level. <laughs> this Comic Sans thing is just a placeholder, don't worry. A little bit more programming later, and now it can actually influence how much is being warped, a feature that is definitely long overdue, but at this point I honestly don't care. And then we finally got to add different ways to warp the level. We can now pinch the level, which just removes a selected section of the level from existence, which is pretty overpowered. And then we have the overwrite ability, which takes a certain vertical column and overwrites multiple other vertical columns in one direction with the same blocks of that column, which is very broken. Each ability now costs a different level of energy depending on how impactful it can be, with Stretch only costing 1, considering how useless it's probably going to be, Pinch costing 2, and Overwrite costing 3. Then we got to use my particle system again to make the lava and portal look better by using a bunch of small moving circles. Aw yeah. Then we whipped up some more textures in Adobe Animate and made our windscreen look much more high-tech than necessary. And then, I suddenly decided to stop development. Nah, I'm just kidding, I didn't really quit it. I just decided to take a break for multiple reasons. So you see, at first I was hoping to get this game all done in one burst and then just make a video about it, but now that I've gotten far enough into development, it's pretty apparent that I'm probably not going to be able to finish it that fast. So it looks like I'm going to be turning this into a series! Yay! You can probably tell by the intro that this whole thing was just meant to be one video, but I'm not going to change it back at this point, I've already gotten far enough. Also, you know how at the beginning of the video I said this was a worse idea than I thought? Yeah, well, I have no idea how I'm going to come up with good ideas for levels that are actually fun. Considering the mechanics, it looks like all the levels are probably going to end up being repetitive unless I come up with something creative, so I'm probably going to have to work on that. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you didn't, then leave. And yeah, stay tuned for episode two of working on a game about bending space and time.
And yeah, next episode of this little series, expect to see some better game design, some new mechanics, some better looks, and maybe even a story. I kind of do have a story plan, but we'll see how that works. Also, we have a brand new Discord server now if you want to join. Link in the description. Alright, bye!